hello. Hi, hi, hi. Love you, love you, love you, love you. You know why? Because you want more of God. That's why you're tuning in. Thank God for Pastor Robin, who has a hunger for the Lord. And we're still the series, Holy Follow God, talking particularly today, lesson five, if you've been following us, what is the language of unbelief? Now, unbelief has a certain language, which means it has words, it has tones, it has undertones, it has implications, all of that. You know the way we communicate. Sometimes it's not just the words, it's just the extra sound. So unbelief has a sound. Um, are you are you trusting God for the house? Mm. <laughs> That's a sound. Are you believing God for a change? Well, I don't I don't know. Mm, I guess so. That's that's a sign. Body language, verbal language, tonation, choice of words will tell anyone whether you are believing God or not. Okay. What are we reading, Pastor Robin? Numbers 13, verses 31 through 32. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. But the men that went up with them with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though which we have gone to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. If you look at this scripture, Pastor Robin, you see that the word said, hmm. or it's implied. For instance, what the men that went up with him said, hmm. we're not able. They brought back an either report, which implies oral wow. reporting, okay? Which they had searched in the land, saying, wow. And that meant that they said it over and over again. The mm -hmm. land which we go will eat you up. Wow. That means that it will destroy you. It will consume you. Mm -hmm. So here we have three times they're talking mm -hmm. and saying negative things. Mm -hmm. They didn't just say it once. They said it because, you know, when, when, when you have a negative spirit, you, you say this stuff over and over again. You, if you ever talk to somebody who is complaining, they repeat themselves. Over and over, they say the same thing. And they say, but you're not hearing me. I said so and so and so, but you said it 20 times. And I say, that's when I, my brain goes to another level because I can't hear it two and three times. And that stuff is like somebody taking a needle and going in your brain and pulling out tissues. You understand? <laughs> because it, the intent is to cripple you, oh my God. to rob you of your excitement, your expectation, your enthusiasm. What is the language of unbelief? There is great doubt and panic. We are not able. After spending 40 days, now there are 40 days in the land. Did you ever read, read that they were touched? No. Did the giants hit them? Not at all. Uh, did you hear the giants talking to them? No. Well, I suppose if they were there, there was some kind of conversation. But the conversation was not of such that the giants, you know, harassed them. Right, right. It didn't say that because if the giants had harassed them, they would have said it. Right. They're already mm -hmm. scared. Yes. They wouldn't have spent 40 days in harassment. No, they wouldn't. After being in Egypt for, for all those years under oppression, they would not have subjected themselves 40 days what? to verbal oppression. Wow. They would have left a long time ago. They were free to go in the land and gather. Wow. So they had access. Mm. But yet they came out saying something negative. There's great complaining and whining. Anyone who is not a believer, they don't believe that where God has them is, you know, positive or healthy. They don't see where God is blessing them. They feel that like they're abandoned. They have the language of a complainer. That night, all the people of the community, Numbers 14 and 1 says, raised their voices and wept aloud. The whole community started crying. Wow. And Lord, can you imagine leading that kind of church? Can you imagine pastoring a church where everybody starts whining and crying all night long? Misery. Yeah, miserable. Whining, now whining, listen, whining, <laughs> whining. Some of you live in a house of, of professional whiners. 
just whining and crying. You know it's a sign of having a tantrum. Yes, yes, That's what yes. you're doing. Wow. Just like your little baby. Ah! I've got one in my house. Just falls out. Just falls out. <laughs> you know, give me the comb. Don't want to give up the comb. Falls out. Why? Because in that baby's mind, you are robbing him of something that he wants. Wow. And that's what they thought. You are not giving me something that I want or I like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to fall out. I can't see the benefit of this. I don't see what I'm going to get. What am I going to get out of this? What am I going to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Except to lose my life. Oh, my and when people can't see how they're going to benefit, they have a tantrum. Get a picture of a baby crying and hold it up before your face. When you start having a tantrum, you look just like that. I look just like that. Okay? There's murmuring, uh, frustration, and content. Extreme drama. All the Israelites, verse 14, 2, Numbers 14, 2, grumbled against Moses. And when a, when a people feel like they are not getting what they want, they attack significant people in their lives. Wives attack husbands. Husbands attack wives. Children attack parents, can't get that sneakers for $200, what do you do? You have a tantrum. Church people attack leaders, pastors. Yes. I want to encourage a pastor right now. You are in good company. The way they did Moses is the way they're going to do you. God has spoken to you and told you to move forward. And they're backing up and complaining and grumbling. Take heart. It's a language of unbelief. Hmm. The people speak language of intimidation. Unbelief. Has a cousin. Wow. What's a cousin? Fear. Intimidation. Unbelief has, a, they have, unbelief has sisters, brothers, cousins, and uncles. Fear is a cousin. Wow. The moment you're not believing the Lord, what do you do? You panic. And they brought up what? An evil report. Out of their fear, they spoke evil. Wow. They spoke, they insulted God. That's what the word evil meant. They went against God's character. All right? And they kept saying, the land is going to eat us up. We saw giants in the land, great statue, sons of Anak. And they were, and we were in our sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. Listen to this. I see myself as failing. So when I meet you, I think you're calling me a failure. Wow. So if I don't put you on my committee, I hate you. Wow. I, you know, I'm sorry. This is not the committee for you. And you have re real problems because you think that people are rejecting you, but you have rejected yourself. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, you have rejected God. Give somebody else an assignment and what the person falls apart. You don't have enough to do. I gave it to another person. Why are you acting like that? Because in your own sight. Did I say in your own sight? In your own sight. I think we ought to reflect right now. Oh my God. Are you surrounded by language of unbelief? Has your walk with God been compromised by your language? Begin using biblical language that speaks of God's character, his sovereignty, and supremacy. And watch the impact of your language on God's promises in your life. Change your language. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You know, I woke up this morning and I had to change my language about the mission. God has called me to do missions. Is it popular? Is it lucrative? Do I become wealthy? No. As a matter of fact, it challenges my finances and my resources. I had to change my language and said, if I have found pleasure in his sight, he will enable me to fulfill his purpose. I have to do it. You have to do it, and you have to do it. And if there's someone around you who is always holding up the language of unbelief, you need to shut it down. I pray that you'll change your language. Your language is helping you to become defeated. It's causing you to be a grasshopper, hopping around That's right. so that somebody can step on you, and it's keeping you from becoming what God wants you to become. Don't you give up today, Pastor Robin. Tell them not to give up. Don't give up. Continue to hold on to what the Lord is saying, despite what it looks like. Tomorrow, precious time.